Welcome to Warren Works. Today, I'm going to be making a dartboard cabinet with live edge doors. So the first thing I'll do is dig out the slab from behind the chop saw, and I can roughly mark out the center and cut it in half. Alright, so I've got about 19 and 3 quarters here and I need to get to 22, so I'm going to add um, about an inch and a half to each one of these. It's a little more than I need, but I'd like to have that room to play with. The doors are going to have this kind of look, almost like a river table. We're just not going to do the epoxy. You'll be able to see into the cabinet. There will be a dartboard behind here. So to add to this slab, I actually have another piece that was cut off from the same original slab. This is the same slab that I used in a previous video it was the one where I made the live edge nautical bar I'll link that below if you want to check that out but that's all from the same piece of wood I'm gonna just trim this out so I can add the width to those pieces now I can remove the guard from my jointer to accommodate for the width of the entire piece They're a little bit wider than eight inches so that's the best way to do it and since it's just a barely a little bit wider, I can scrape off that last little uh, maybe quarter inch with a hand plane just to get it into flat. And from there, I'll run through the thickness planer. Then I'll rip the other piece of the slab down into strips that I can trim and use to extend the width of the doors. To join these pieces together, I'll use the domino. This will just help with assembly and keeping everything flat. While the doors are drying, I'll begin work on the main cabinet. I used dados to hold this cabinet together, so I set up a dado stack in my saw and ran the boards through. The back of the cabinet hangs on a French cleat and there will be drawers at the bottom. So to keep the drawers from being too shallow, I cut a stop dado stopping above the back of the drawers. Here you can see I want it to stop short, so I have a line marked on the board of where exactly I want the dado to stop. And now I can just use a chisel to clean up any of that extra um, bit that I wasn't quite able to get. And now I can just cut the top, bottom, and middle divider to their final length. I used screws to hold this cabinet together, so here I'll countersink the holes so I can have room for a plug.
Once I have my drill press set up, I can use a plug cutter to cut the plugs. Now I can glue and screw the carcass of the cabinet together, and while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, I'll go back to working on the doors. That is heavy. Woo! So it's hard to see on camera, but these slabs had quite a few little cracks in them. So here I'm just throwing down some tape to uh, keep the epoxy from leaking through the other side. I'll use epoxy all around just to stabilize all the cracks. The edge itself had a lot of cracks too, which I, I filled with epoxy. I'll use a blowtorch just to heat the epoxy, which makes it a little bit thinner and it seeps farther down into the cracks that way. And once the epoxy is dry, it's just quite a bit of hand sanding to bring it back to the wood. Back to working on the cabinet, I added this little divider in the middle to go in between the drawers. And with everything put together, I can now install the plugs, making sure to keep the grain going in the same direction so they're less visible. Oh look, we have a visitor. What's up? What's going on, fella? How you doing? With the main cabinet construction done, I can begin working on the drawers. These drawers are pretty small and not too deep, so I used quarter inch material to make them. So I just resawed that from some three quarter inch oak. And to keep these little pieces together, I thought dovetails would probably be the strongest joint, and who doesn't love dovetails? So I cut them all out on the table saw. So these are all my sides and my pin boards. When cutting them on the table saw with the blade leaned over, you don't get the full depth in the corner. So I'm just cutting out that last little bit in the corner with a chisel. Since my table saw has a nice reference surface, I will use it to clamp these in place. Now I can mark this out. Now here I'm just finishing laying out the tail boards. What I'll do here is I'll stand the blade on the table saw back up to 90 degrees and I will set the miter gauge to the same angle as the blade was tilted for the pin board.
This method definitely takes a little bit of finesse, but once you get your stop set up, it's pretty repeatable, and you can see the results are actually pretty good. I was really happy with the way this worked. I'll definitely be cutting dovetails like this again in the future. While the drawers are drying, I can final sand out the doors and cut them to their final size. So I forgot to route the groove in the bottom of the drawer for the bottom. Uh, I was just working a little too quick, got excited about my dovetails and glued them together. And then today I was like, well, I guess I forgot that. When we run in the groove on the router, typically you don't have want to have the workpiece between the fence and the bit. That is asking for a kickback. So I just wanted to preface this by saying that I recommend against doing this tactic. This is not a how-to video. This is just a video showing the process of how I made this piece. But if you see me doing this, don't assume that that is the right way to do it. Full disclosure, this is the wrong way to do it and uh, I don't recommend doing it that way. And here I'll cut another piece off that leftover bit of slab. I'm going to use this to make some veneers for the drawer fronts. Make sure I keep the orientation here because I want to have a nice grain match across the front. Even though there's a divider there, I still think it'll still kind of look cool if the grain is at least flowing the same direction. So I'll keep it flush to this side and do the same thing here. This is kind of cool too here. You can see this grain kind of has a, a circular motion like that. So there's going to be a finger hole cut out and I just want to kind of follow that grain. All right, so I'm going to be using wood glue to glue these veneers on. And not everybody knows this, but you can actually thin wood glue about 10% water. Just going to add a splash of water from my water bottle. That's plenty. You can see how much thinner that is. That works actually well for veneering stuff. You can see this goes on a lot thinner once it's thinned out with that water a little bit. Now I can use a flush trim bit on the router table just to clean up the little bit of overhang on the drawer fronts. And now I can whip together a quick little jig to route out the finger pulls on the drawers.
For the back of the cabinet, I used MDF, which then gets covered with cork board, so I'll just cut that out right here. Again. For the second try with the cork board, I clamped a straight edge to the top to keep the cork from shifting on me, and this worked so much better than my first try. I can pocket hole and glue the lower back into place. And make the French cleat. Then I can trim and fit the upper back and drill the pocket holes. With the back made, I can move on to routing out the mortises for the hinges. I'll cut out the bulk of the mortise with the trim router and then I'll go back with a chisel just to fine tune everything and make sure I get a nice tight fit on the hinges. On the inside of the doors I wanted to have some chalkboard so you can keep score when you're playing darts. And the big box store chalkboard was really junky. I ended up buying a full chalkboard off the shelf that I was able to just take apart and cut up to make the smaller ones that fit on the doors. And here I'll just cut up some little strips of oak to basically make a little picture frame that fits around the chalkboard. I used CA glue to temporarily hold it together and then I went back and cut some splines into the corners for some added strength. With the dartboards glued into the frames, I can mask them off for finish, and then I can glue the dartboards to the doors. And with the stamp of approval, I can move on to spraying finish. For this project, I just sprayed some lacquer. One of the other cool parts of this project was my client wanted their crest engraved on the door, so I sent that out to a local engraver and it came out great. After three coats on everything, I can rub everything back and finish it out with a top coat of wax. And with the finish done, I can install the back, along with the hinges and magnetic door catches.
And with that, the dartboard cabinet is complete. Here are some final pictures of the dartboard cabinet installed. Thanks for watching.